have quite a variety of people's backgrounds and interests. And in a lot of ways, that's what this seminar is all about, is to bring people from different disciplines together, to mix it up, to build relationships, to understand each other, and to get new ideas. We really are reaching out to a wider audience to engage them in our pursuit of space development and space tourism. And my most important point of my whole presentation is we are in the experience business. Capital letters. And that's how we will reach out, is by engaging people that they themselves can experience uh, going to space, or experience also helping others go to space, being designers and attorneys and finance people and so forth. There's a whole village, you might say, of disciplines that have to come together for our space industry to grow and to thrive. If you would just take a second and please read this. The reason I do this is it's kind of like a force field protection thing because I'll be showing you some pretty out there concepts. We're pretty much so here now, truly, as our private space enterprise tourism industry grows. But it's been kind of a long haul, but it's been very entertaining. And this, of course, is my design. Many of you have seen this for a real orbital super yacht. And I think this will actually happen within a decade because it will serve the pride and prestige of major corporations, wealthy individuals, or families. In the same way, ocean-going super yachts and mega yachts serve those purposes. But in doing this, we will develop great technology, space operational awareness, understanding, and capabilities, and just have a really, really super cool project. Now, I've been doing this for a long time, so let me give you just a little bit of background. Uh, 1982, I figured out that space tourism was going to be the big industry off world because people want an experience, and people are willing to risk their lives spend lots of money and prepare for these life-changing experiences. I also deduced at that time that the cruise line industry is the perfect industry to model the space tourism industry after. Cruise ships exist to take people out into a harsh environment, the ocean, provide them with a safe, wonderful experience. But basically, they're amazing technological devices. So if you take what a cruise line does for oceans, translate that to the design, the back of the ocean of space, the parallel for an industry model is very good. The yachts would be beforehand because they're smaller and they don't have to make a profit. Their profit is social. So the yachts are a social profit and the cruise ships, cruise lines are just normal profit. Some of you know my background basically is working on themed entertainment projects. We built Space World in Japan, which is my original idea. I do a lot of design work, specialty work in uh, the space theme entertainment industry. Uh, and then extreme design. I've had a chance to work on real space projects, quite a few, and then underwater and dark projects, which have been built. And the lessons learned from building in these extreme environments have been profound, truly. A lot of these we have to do good work, otherwise people die. So when you take entertainment design and extreme design, you get immersive simulation design. So one of the nice things with doing real space projects is when we do our Earth-based entertainment project, we add the authenticity to it, which is pretty unique. And that gives us an advantage, and people in the finance community find that advantageous. And so far, I've got about $310 million built from my original concepts and ideas. And what, what this point here is, you can create an idea and a concept, build a team, work very hard, and actually implement, get things done. It's possible. Uh, and I wrote a book on space tourism, and been involved in a lot of strategic planning. And I'm really kind of proud to say that I've been involved as a futurist. Uh, in looking forward to space tourism, immersive simulation, space sports, green space. And green space is how do we approach designing vehicles as well as the facilities on Earth that build and manufacture and operate our vehicles and so forth. So future forecasting is a fun pursuit. And that's, if you think about it, we're all futurists in this room right now because we're looking forward to a future that's more bright, more interesting, more exciting, more healthy, and we can all be a part of that. But uh, what is the space experience? Let's take a couple of minutes to just go through that. So boarding pass. And what people love to do when they're in space, obviously, is look out the viewports and look at our beautiful Earth. We have a gorgeous planet. People are amazed at how colorful Earth truly is. And everyone likes to take pictures. Uh, Dennis Tito, our friend who flew as the first private space tourist, still used film back in those days. Uh, 2001, took 35 rolls of film, just of pictures of Earth and inside the space station. You get a sunrise, sunset every 45 minutes. But the most unique part of the space experience is zero gravity. Living and floating and dancing and flying in zero gravity. That's what people want to do is to float and fly. Uh, you can take a space walk, or as I call it, a space float. Always drove me crazy as a kid when they say space walk because you don't walk in space. Romance. Uh, <laughs> But that's a frontier we must explore. I think America needs to be first, as always. 
Uh, lunar flybys, our friends at Space Adventures are planning that right now. They've sold one of two tickets. Uh, each ticket is $150 million for a lunar flyby. They expect to do that within the next four or five years. That's two passengers, one Soviet uh, cosmonaut. That's going to be amazing because the next time we all experience uh, a real live Earth rise will be private enterprise and space tourism. And I think this is one of the most important pictures in humanity's history so far. Because what happens the first time the astronauts came around and saw Earth rising above the moon's crest, it helped us understand our place in the universe. Earth is a place. Earth is our place. So going outward gives us a chance to look backward. And I think that is a social value is extraordinarily important. Plus the fact it's projecting a positive view, a healthy view of the future. Uh, so anyway, that's part of what the space experience is all about. Now these people have actually paid as private space travelers. So we actually have a space tourism industry, a real industry. It's very small. We have to remember that the airline industry started very small. And all industries grow over time. And as uh, the technology improves, the price comes down, so more and more people will be going. But Dennis flew in 2001, Charles Simone 2007, and 2009, so we have a repeat guest. And there would be more people on this, but the space station is fully yeah. occupied with six astronauts and cosmonauts. There's a waiting list of people who have the money and the capability to fly. There's no, no place to go to, and that's why Bob Bigelow, which we'll talk in a minute, is working on building his first space hotel uh, for space. And they go to the International Space Station, which I actually think is pretty cool. And uh, it's an amazing facility in Earth's orbit. It's actually a national laboratory. And I love the fact that they have this cupola, which allows you to really view Earth because of the windows. And that's what the astronauts really want. Now, when we talk about space business, we really have to include the moon. So it's really the Earth-Moon system that we're talking about. And that's exciting because people, once you've gone to Earth orbit, what's next? People want to do something next and something next. So then you do lunar orbit and then you do lunar landing. So that's amazing. So our industry can grow and grow and grow. Now here's the heart of what we call the space experience economy. That you can actually have real space flight, Earth-based simulations such as NASA Visitor Center, space theme parks, space museums, and movies and TVs and games. There's a synergy, a powerful synergy, between these three mediums of real Earth-based simulation and uh, media. And that synergy pushes forward all three of them. What's also great about our industry from a business perspective and corporate sponsorships is you can have, this is obviously your larger audience with virtual worlds and TV and so forth and people physically going places. You can take a zero gravity flight. You can soon be able to take a, a suborbital flight. And then real space flight. So if you're into the space theme, and it's a niche market, uh, you can go through a lifetime up the ladder, you might say, to ever increasingly authentic real space experience leading to the ultimate real space. And that's great from a business perspective. You have lifelong customers and customers can work toward an ever increasingly real experience. So real space, suborbital flights, zero gravity flights, immersive simulations, virtual worlds. And we're involved through Space Tourism Society in all of these arenas and actually bringing more dialogue and more ideas to the table so to speak. And the, the virtual, we're actually now, this is so amazing to think about it. We, as a species, are exploring Mars right now with the Curiosity rover. And Curiosity is doing a fantastic job of science and public awareness that it is great and noble to explore. And this rover will be operating probably for at least a decade, probably longer than that. And we'll probably make some extraordinary discoveries in the next two years. Right now we're in a desert area within the heart of this crater, but it gets in the higher areas, or more interesting areas, uh, we might have some fantastic discoveries. Not life, but the, that the fact that life could have existed. And see the enthusiasm? We are explorers. Let's explore more. Now, we also have business pioneers uh, from Paul Allen to Jeff Bezos, to Bob Bigelow, Elon Musk. And these fellas, and now we have 10, we have 10 billionaires who have stepped forward <clears throat> and they're investing in private space enterprise tourism companies. Here's a little bit of a kind of laundry list, real quick, of some of the projects they have. Paul Allen is designing, they want to build the world's largest uh, aircraft. It's called Stratus Launch. And then drop a full-up rocket that will actually go into orbit. And eventually could be for tourists too. Jeff Bezos is doing a vertical takeoff, a vertical landing rocket, because his goal is dealing with the moon. So he has an alliance with Bob Bigelow, who wants to build a hotel actually in orbit, but also on the moon. So you're seeing here, there's this kind of echo uh, ecosystem. Uh, take a second, please, and read these quotes. 
this is what I like, no limits. So what Branson's group wants to do, Virgin uh, Galactic, is do suborbital flights, six passengers, two crew members in the cockpit. And they want to hopefully have it so the passengers obviously can unbelt and uh, float around inside the cabin. They hope to be flying, hopefully early next year, with paying passenger for suborbit. They built facilities at the Mojave Air and Spaceport. This is spaceship, this is White Knight 2, the carrier aircraft, spaceship 2. There's also been a spaceport actually built in New Mexico, way out in the boonies in New Mexico. So spaceports are becoming quite a, a thriving business too. There's 35 of them around the world. And this happens to be a really cool design by me and Mark uh, for the Mojave Air and Spaceport. And the point here is I'm playing architect for a minute, so indulge me. Mojave Desert, most of you know, has these beautiful sand dunes. So I modeled this after the sand dunes. So it has this kind of beautiful arc to it. It's about a 400 foot long building. This is a really cool structural system. And uh, if we're successful with a state bond uh, in a year, we'll have 100 million for this project. Uh, Bob Bagel, I mentioned, he, I actually was the first space person he met in uh, the year 1999. And these are inflatable structures that go up, they inflate, uh, they're connected together. And that allows you to have larger habitable areas for your space vehicles. SpaceX, here it is, a private enterprise, one company designed their rocket engines, their rockets, their capsules, operating the whole thing. Our friends at x wants to do something similar to what Virgin is doing, but just one passenger and one uh, pilot, so you're right up in the cockpit uh, when you do your suborbital flight. The Russians basically want to do their space hotel. And we've recently had the first real sampling, you might say, of sports in space from the standpoint of Red Bull spending tens of millions of dollars funding a skydive from the edge of space. Uh, and you can imagine eventually skydiving further away from Earth and further away, and eventually suborbital skydiving, orbital skydiving. And these are some of the new kids on the block, Planetary Resources. You look at the people behind us, Larry Page, Eric Smith, Jim Cameron's involved, Charles Simone, who flew twice. They're testing the legal regimes of can you own extraterrestrial material? Can you mine the asteroids? Can you own the ice you get from it? Can you do that on the moon? So I mentioned 10 billionaire. Here's the list. If there's one or two billionaires involved in the industry, it might be kind of quirky. If there's 10, and some of them are, have started other industries, uh, then it's not a quirk. There's a trend. So this is very powerful in the eyes of the financial community, even the political community. And this is the new, new kids on the block, as we're about before you know. <laughs> uh, this is Frank Drake. This is uh, David Marcus, and there's Buzz. David Marcus is the president of PayPal. Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, we had a press conference with about 200 people and announced the formation of PayPal Galactic. I mean, this is truly amazing to think about. It. These guys are super serious. They're really going through their, their space geekhood process right now. And they're serious about developing over the next number of years a internet-based payment system for off-world places, facilities, and people. They're very serious because they want to stay on the cutting edge, the pioneering edge of, of the future. So this was actually pretty cool. Um, I believe we're going to have a very long and thriving relationship with PayPal and Galactic. And this is just a sample of industries who have never truly been involved in space. But now they're engaging formally and their reputation is on the line. So our ecosystem is growing through a greater variety of industries joining in because space is really seen by these people, by everyone in a lot of ways, as the future. Uh, how many of you have heard of the X Prize Foundation? Most everybody. Well, this whole era of prizes has stimulated this whole uh, generation, you might say, of young people getting involved in space as engineers and scientists and program managers. And it really fits into what we're now beginning to call more and more the future of space. And right now, it's space renaissance. We are going through a renaissance for space development right now. Eventually, we're going to need a Coast Guard service, just like, I mean, Space Guard service, like we have the Coast Guard. And real quickly, if we look at how this industry may form, so we have a space experience industry, and we have extreme sports, I think, will be the leader in terms of real capital because industries and corporations want eyeballs, and extreme spread. Red Bull got zillions of media impressions from their stuff. The adventure travel community is getting involved more and more. Space yachts are going to come online sooner than you think. The hospitality 
cruise line industry is perking up. I'm actually talking with these people more and more. Uh, finance and development, well, now you have PayPal and well. And then uh, the space industry itself, you know, from the technology and stuff. But this is a whole system that's starting to come together. And media and branding, sponsorships, promotions, so people with marketing fields are needed right now. So this is this ecosystem that's coming together. So we are developing the space experience economy in these three areas. And we are in the space experience business.